Previously at the Bluestone Villa. The last time our house is going to look like this. We have had some very exciting activity this week because our scaffolding has gone up outside, which is definitely like probably well it is at this point the probably biggest thing we've really done here in terms of like big building work i'm going to take you back in time to thursday the 11th of march now which was the day that we had the scaffolding put up as you'll be able to see the render out the front here is really really catty it's been patched over the years which accounts for the different and rough textures that you can see here and there are also a number of cracks that means the render has blown from the wall and is allowing rainwater to get underneath the render hence the work we're undertaking you be careful <laughs> you're not funny you're ridiculous hello welcome back to the bluestone villa and welcome to another renovation diary very exciting renovation diary i feel like i say that a lot and it maybe not isn't always the case but this one it genuinely is the case the job has begun well 140 year old render is currently coming off of the front of our house we have had our scaffolding up for just over a week um because it, this was meant to start last week um but our tradesperson that we are using, um, his last job was overrunning, so he has started a week later. He has kicked off today and he has done so much. We are actually really, really shocked. He's taken quite a lot of render off from the very top floor all the way down to basically kind of where I am stood at the moment, which is in our bedroom on the middle floor. So he's kind of taken it, he's kind of taken it to a, about here um so yeah kind of to about there so he's got that far down on the house and yeah it's very exciting i think i don't know what i was expecting but the worst probably because obviously this has never come off before you kind of wonder like what might be lurking behind now some houses put render on to hide kind of imperfections or issues and um, so if you were to take it off there is always that concern of like what lies beneath but actually obviously this is just the style of the house a house like this would have always been rendered like this so it's not there to hide an imperfection that is just the style of this type of victorian house but of course it hasn't been exposed for that long a time so there is still that kind of little little nervousness about it but so far so good i'm actually really impressed i feel like it looks like the brickwork looks actually pretty good and i guess i expected to just kind of maybe you've seen a little bit more movement or something i don't know but it, it all looks pretty good and nigel who is working on this for us has said that actually he has seen like way worse things <laughs> than than ours so that's great so he's just gone home now I thought it'd be really helpful to kind of run down actually what we're doing kind of what this entails like how long it's going to take so as i said we've had the scaffolding up for about a week or so now um and hi what yes yeah, so we have had the scaffolding up for about a week or so now um, and we have booked it initially for eight weeks to cover us hopefully for most of the work and then we pay an additional fee for every week that we need to keep it up for. So Nigel, who is our first tradesperson that's gonna be working on this and who started today, he is a plasterer by trade. He is very local to the area, always lived in Tunbridge Wells and his family have been plasterers in Tunbridge Wells since the 1800s, which I think is a really little cool kind of fact and it feels kind of, I think it feels quite, weird and cute that like perhaps like his ancestor might have worked on our house originally like all those years ago for all we know but anyway he actually has some history with the house as well he's done work here previously like 25 years ago with the previous owners and um we hired him in the first place because he has also done work about 20 years ago or so for james's parents so we had like a connection with him and then also he has a connection with the house and he obviously has a connection with the town as well um so yep we've used him before for other things so he kicked off today and he is basically taking off the render at the front of the house and the reason we're doing that is because 
it most likely has never been done before in fact it hasn't been done before it's only been patched so if there has been any kind of cracks or issues it's obviously just been kind of patched up and then painted over um, and we wanted to take it off because actually we feel that the pat is gone kind of past the point of patching it is really really tatty and tired you've got several options when you're doing something like this so you could do what all of the other people that have lived before that's most likely have done which is basically patching um up any kind of um cracks or anything so what happens then is that there'll be different textures on the front of the property so it already kind of won't look as smart and kind of clean lines and all of that and then you could instead have it all skimmed so um kind of just one other coat of render to go over the top and we kind of didn't opt for that for two reasons firstly we really don't want to lose any of like the the intricate details that we have at the house so that was kind of a slight concern for us so we didn't want that to happen and we wanted to kind of bring everything back and kind of elevate it more but equally as i think i might have already said we've just got kind of so many different like cracks or like patchy areas it just looks really really tatty it looks really really messy and it equally where some of the cracks are it's like the render is like popped away from the wall and so it's letting water in as well which obviously isn't great in a long-term perspective in terms of like integrity of the actual build of the house so yes and it really is only on that front that it's the worst our front is kind of south facing so we think that's probably why so it gets exposed quite a bit and we think that's probably why it's kind of probably the worst um facade of the house so it's just the front we're having taken off not the whole property which i just dread to think that would be absolutely insane both price and time and yeah a lot of work so yeah so we're just having the front off and then he will kind of patch up kind of any issues which there doesn't seem to be anything yet and then he will he will basically put a new render all over the front and then we will have to wait for that to dry for quite some time i think it's four weeks for it to like fully fully dry so the front can't be painted um until then and then Nigel has kind of um, at the moment put a timestamp on the job of like three to five weeks. And it's kind of that big a discrepancy in time because the three weeks is like, I guess, like a best case scenario. And the five weeks is if there was any kind of weird issues that we might have to get resolved or maybe get other people in to help resolve or anything like that. So, yeah. And I guess maybe weather dependent as well, because I'm sure... If it was chucking it down with rain he's probably not going to be rendering i assume um but yeah but we were just really impressed with how much he's already got off today You're gonna do like a King Kong kind of. I'm pleasantly surprised, I have to say. So I guess he patches all of that stuff, right? Oh yeah. Or like sorts it out, like whatever. Well, it's, not, it's not loose once it's got rent on it, is it? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. I think I expected to have seen more movement. I think that's what I'm most surprised by. That I it would have expected it to have had more cracks. Yeah. Careful, because some of this is shaking a little bit, and you are a little dumpy monkey. <laughs> oh, that is really shaking. <gasps> no, James, stop it. That does feel rather loose. Careful. 
I can't believe it. I feel like that's amazing. That's it. Really is. Oh, needs to bring the car back. I told you it was incredible, right? Nigel has said that a lot of it came off quite easy and the stuff that has come off easier is actually the stuff that is probably the oldest. So it's the stuff that was probably up there originally that's like 140 years old. Um, and the reason it comes off so easy is because it is actually, there's probably like water got underneath it and what have you. So it's already kind of come away from the brickwork. So it heat, it's not taking him too much to kind of pop that stuff off. The stuff that has been a little bit more challenging, which you would have seen, there were a couple of patches that were still there in the section that he's actually taken the rest of the render off. And that's because those will have been the sections that will have been patched over time. And so obviously the integrity of it is um, a lot better than the stuff that was put on 140 years ago. So um, it's just a little bit more challenging to take off. So I think he must be working his way down and getting all of it off that's quite simple to get off and then I guess he's probably going to go back and then tackle the more challenging stuff. We were also really shocked because um, I'll put a, a picture up if I haven't got any footage but the actual thickness of the render looks quite slim and James and I were a little bit shocked by that because obviously as I said to you we didn't just want to skim the front because we wanted to kind of ensure that it was kind of as watertight as possible and that it wasn't going to kind of pop away from the the brickwork and um we also didn't want to lose um the detail in the house and yeah interestingly enough um it didn't look that thick so actually james asked him and was like oh like we expected it to be way thicker than this and he explained that it probably would have been but again this is like time the things that happen over time he said it, it will have been like worn down by like rain and stuff over the years so yeah that's some of the reason it's kind of like washed away and he said he's worked on houses before where they've got like the pebble dash and actually none of the pebbles are left in the actual cement anymore because they've been like washed away so yeah found it really interesting we've i feel like we've learned a lot today and i'm really excited to see more as it unfolds and i'll share everything that we're learning at the same time but but yeah i'm just really excited to see more of the house there are a couple of things that we have already raised as things that we think might be like something that needs to be resolved so we've got on one of our windows it looks like the render um at the top of the window is like bowing slightly so it could be that it's like a window like the lintel i think it's called that is the support above it so it could be that that's the issue but actually nigel said to us this evening it actually can sometimes just be that it's the render um and hopefully that that will just be the case and based on what i've seen so far of like the rest of the house i'm like quietly optimistic that it is just the render and once it's taken off um, he'll be able to resolve it when he puts it back on. You hear that? The sweet sound of render being removed again. We are on day two. It is Tuesday the 23rd of March. Nigel was back. He got here at nine. Um, it's quite a noisy job so we think he's probably Instead of starting at eight, start at nine so that he doesn't upset the neighbours more than he needs to. But yeah, he's he's kind of up there doing stuff. It's very noisy. It feels like he might be done with the taking the render off this week. I am no expert on this subject matter whatsoever, but I feel like he did quite a good chunk yesterday so as long as that momentum stays and there's no kind of like major issues I feel like possibly by the end of the week all the render could be off which means then next week the render can go on and I'm not really too sure on like how long rendering the whole of the front of the house would take but I assume you can't let it like dry completely because we are having the pencil lines put back in so I think originally Victorian properties like this would have had like the 
the blocks marked out um, and actually we can see particularly on the sides and the back I'll try and take you out and show you um, a bit later maybe we can see kind of the remnants of where we had pencil lines at some point across this house's history we're having those put back in at the front so it can't kind of like get too dry I guess before he has to put those on so yeah I'm not really sure how long that process takes but yeah I feel like I feel like more was done yesterday than we had anticipated, so maybe it won't even take the three weeks, who knows? <laughs> white thing there is missing from there it dropped out so <laughs> thankfully in one piece so he's gonna have to stick that back on but we're making moves he's not coming back tomorrow I don't know whether he's got another job or whether it's because the weather's supposed to be not great but he'll be back on Thursday to do this lower section and as part of that we will be able to discover for for good or bad, what is making this bow slightly? Yikes. You still up there? It feels like you probably have bigger windows up. Pull this stuff off. Yeah, that looks good. What do you mean you it feels like we could have bigger windows? What, as in like they're not the right size? Yeah. Oh yeah. God, that sky is so blue. Careful. <laughs> Got visions of you just coming through the ceiling there. What does that look like? I just can't get over the precision of the line between ours and next doors. <laughs> like, I'd be so scared of like, if I did it, half of next doors would come off at the same time. That's why you pay the professionals. Hello! Is it a big gap? Happy days. Yeah, I mean. Oh, when I went on my walk yesterday, there were a few houses that had, like, you know, we've got one round the side, like the crate. I think it's just obviously just, just yeah. normal. Cool, right, let's go for a walk there. Let me go and put this indoors and lock the door. Hi guys, it is Thursday, the 25th of March. We had no action at the house yesterday. Our plasterer was not here. Um, we knew this. He told us at the end of the day on Tuesday that he wasn't coming yesterday. I might have even told you this already. I don't know. I, I forget. Um, but yeah, so he did not come yesterday, but he was back today. And actually, he did something that we were not anticipating. So he's obviously taken off two thirds of the render from the front of the house. He did that on Monday and Tuesday. And so we kind of just assumed that today he would be picking that up again and taking off the bottom third of the render as well but he is not he has actually put on the first coat of render so i think there are two coats of render that goes on the first one is the scratch coat i think we'll check with james on that but it's a scratch coat basically it's a thin layer of render that then has kind of like markings in it and basically means when you put the rest of the render on top of that, it kind of sticks to it. I suppose a bit like keying would work, you know, when you just like roughly sand it just to kind of, so the paint has something to cling to. So it's a bit like that. So he has been doing that on the section that he'd already removed the render from. 
because we need to make it watertight and I think rain is due in fact it has rained a little bit today only only a little bit so he has got on with that today he'll be back tomorrow he said as long as weather is on his side um so yeah let's go and take a look outside um, and see what's there sure oh so there it is that's what it looks like i kind of get a bit of a feel what it would look like if it was a dark color So he's covered that first top two thirds with the scratch coat TBC on official name because I can't recall if I've got that right. Um, but just so you can get a bit of a closer look and see what I mean about the, the lines. It's almost like he's taken a fork across them all. The only shame is it would have been cool to have seen the whole house without the render on so we could see it all just the brickwork but like to say on these things is what it is. I can note down what they are. Oh. Yeah, I wasn't too far off the first time around. What do you reckon? Yeah, two. Well, what's an Idris point? Nine inches by four inches, which about 90, isn't it? By three and a half? 90 by three and a half. round up this week's renovation diary with a bit of an unboxing because we've got a number of items that we've purchased for the exterior project um, so mostly around hardware so we are replacing our air bricks um, around the property so there are two or three out front and then one towards the back as well and then we also need some new lights so we've bought one of those which is the one to go over our front door so I thought I would share with you what they look like. I don't know how I've managed to not open these sooner because we've had these since Saturday and it's now Monday, but I wanted to do it with the camera. So let's go with this top one first, which feels very light. It's probably not that exciting, whatever's in here. As you can see. That just went all the way back and stayed there. Still on, <laughs> still on camera. That really hurt. I'm gonna cry. Is that because you should say like people should have an adult present with you now? Stop it, Jones. That really hurt. It's bleeding. I've only got seven minutes left on this, so I need to skedaddle. So, haha. <laughs> This is something to do with our light. So we've got a new light for over a <laughs> Not very exciting. I think this is for the light to make it kind of better for those that are, don't have like protection outside. So this is something to do with that. Not very exciting. Moving on. Let's just toss this, toss this out of the way. Um, let's open the light then, seeing as we are open the first bit so I got these from Pookie Lights um, I looked at my go-to Industrial because um, I really love their lighting most of our lights are from Industrial in here um, they had some nice ones but they only had ones with like exposed bulbs um, and I wanted kind of for it to have a little bit of a hat um, and I'd seen some on Jim Lawrence that I thought were amazing but they were 300 odd pounds we need two separate lights for outside obviously this in general is a hugely expensive project and so you know sacrifices have to be made so I tried to look for something that reminded me of the Jim Lawrence lights and gave me the same kind of good vibes as those but that um, was more within budget so I've got this from Pookie Lights 
Well, it's worth on box, so I can't get into it. <laughs> Yeah, do you know I'm getting notes on how to do this from James. it was around like the 140 pound mark but i will link it below you can see so it was half the price of the jim lawrence lights um and needs must but yeah this it comes with kind of a little hat which is what i wanted um for that i'll also share a picture of the jim lawrence lights that i really like so you can see like where i was going with this but it sits like that off of the wall and it's kind of an antique brass and then it also has then this big glass base to it as well so just so you get a bit of an idea well, actually, I should just do it up and then they'll, they'll get a better idea. Don't break. Don't drop. Don't break. Yeah. So that's it. So that's going to go centrally above our front door, hopefully, as long as we feel it looks right and, yeah, fits right. But I really love that. It's not exactly the same as the Jim Lawrence ones, but I think it's pretty close and I'm really happy with it. And for half the price, I'm uber happy. What do you reckon? Looks good. Nice, right? Mm. Okay. Very enthused. Wow. It's good because you can send it back by sending it over that box cup. I really it's bleeding underneath it now. Okay, so we also have ordered new air bricks. So I really love trying to retain as many original features as possible, but these obviously are outside and they have taken a bit of a battery. In fact, the one out back has actually disintegrated in its entirety. So it just makes sense, seeing as we're making the front look so smart, we might as well actually, well, and the side, we might as well actually make everything look smart about it. So because we've got a bit of a brass theme in the house in general, we are also having obviously brass external hardware as well. And so we thought we would go with brass for the air bricks as well, just to kind of give it kind of a bit more of a high end look as well. So I think we bought these from Broughton's. Um, there was lots of different ones, like different companies that does this kind of thing. Um, some more expensive than others. Some where you can actually like close the air bricks. Um, but I think most of those were more like internal. Um, but we've got these ones um, from Broughton's, I think, for our confirm. And they are, an, I don't think they're an antique. They're like unlacquered satin brass I think and so what happens is they um, kind of weather over time and like get a nice patina which I quite like the idea of that so apparently all of these air bricks are pretty standard size so we couldn't we couldn't measure we couldn't measure exactly um, just because of the render and what have you but we think it's pretty much there or thereabouts and our plasterer renderer is going to obviously make sure that they fit okay and do any kind of um do any kind of um prep work around it that it might need if it's kind of slightly too small or what have you I need help with my unboxing i'm not very good at it also had a nail injury i didn't know if i was allowed to do that because i made fun of how i opened the other thing so <laughs> I'm really struggling to get it out of the box. So this, so this, it feels like I've got like a gold brick from a bank. <laughs> but this is it. I really loved this design. I mean, all of them are pretty 
special to be fair but I just thought it kind of looked quite similar to what we've already got in a way and it felt very Victorian. Some of them were much more kind of basic as well but I really really wanted to keep kind of them as a bit of a feature and I actually think they'll probably stand out more now. So these were about, I think they were, they were 40 pounds. I think these were about 41 pounds each and we bought three of these. I feel like we've only got two. I can't. Oh no, we've got three. <laughs> we've got three. Um, but yeah, so I thought I would open those for you. I'm really, really pleased with all of these. Actually, let me confirm that we did get them from Dolphins. Mm, I can't confirm. I will post it down below a link to where we got these from. But yeah, they were £41, we bought three of these and yeah, I can't wait to see them in place. Um, we still have more external hardware to purchase. We need another outside light for our back door and we need to buy all of our kind of hardware for both our front door and our back door. So that is on our to-do list and something we need to do ASAP. So I will definitely share those when we get that as well. But yeah, I thought I would round this up here. We are at the beginning of a new week because it is now Monday the 29th of March. Our plasterer is not back until Wednesday and I think he will then be taking off the, like, the final bottom third of the render out front and then probably putting the scratch coat on that then. So yeah, more to come. But thanks for tuning in um, for another renovation diary. If you are new here, then I would love for you to kind of hit subscribe and join us for more home and renovations and interiors content. And I look forward to seeing you um, for next week's renovation diary. Bye guys, thanks.